let's see what Jackie Cavanaugh, whether she cares. Uh, portfolio manager uh, at Putnam Investments. Um, I guess my point, Jackie, was that the market, on, on any given day, we've either thought there's going to be X cuts, Y cuts, whatever. But every day, it seems like the Dow in the morning is up 150 points. And we've had a series of new highs across all the averages. I guess maybe you'd like the Fed to ease eventually, but there's other things that, that must be happening, other positive things. Yes, Joe. Thank you again for having me on. I would agree with Becky. I would take the under and take no cuts uh, for this year. I just don't think the impetus is there to generate a cut. If you just look at the macro backdrop, employment remains very strong. GDP estimates continue to rise. Um, CPI is not really where they want it yet. And you've actually had financial conditions continue to loosen. You know, investment grade spreads, high yield spreads, very tight. Um, IPO market is open again. And so I just don't see the impetus for the Fed to cut. And to your point, you know, we have moved from six cuts expected coming out of the December meeting to three, and the market has rallied up 10 percent right in the face of that. And so I do think there are other secular things happening. The economy is strong. The consumer is very resilient. And so if you're the Fed, I think they're just going to keep moving the cheese. You know, we came in thinking six. Now we're at three. And I suspect by the end of the year we're at zero or maybe we we get one cut. I mean, maybe we do by the end of the year get one. Um, and yeah, the market's been incredibly strong in the face of, of those changing expectations, which would not probably have been my base case coming into the year. One of the things that, that has uh, worried people like Jamie Dimon and others uh, is, is that inflation is, is not totally tamed and, and that if it were to continue to, to be sticky or, or even go up like it did for the first couple of months of the year, that eventually the Fed causes a recession. If that's not going to happen, and if inflation really is under control and, you know, for whatever reasons, Fed or otherwise, if we're in a disinflationary period and the market is, uh, I mean, and the economy is strong, is there any reason that, that we're going to get tripped up? What would trip us up? And if the economy stays strong with low inflation, why shouldn't the markets go up? So I think there are two things that could be potentially, you know, this is the what keeps me up at night. And you kind of touched on it. You know, in the event that inflation starts to reaccelerate, I think in the last meeting, the Fed realistically widened the aperture of what they're willing to accept, right, from inflation. Um, you know, you saw all of their estimates go up. Their estimate for GDP went up. Their estimate for inflation went up. Their estimate for unemployment went down. And yet they were still only calling for the same three cuts. And so... I think that they've certainly widened the aperture that maybe it's not exactly two, that if it's in the ballpark of two, that that's going to be sufficient for them. Because there are dynamics happening underneath that will have some upward pressure, just, you know, reshoring of supply lines and different things. I think the concern and the risk to the market would be something that wasn't even in your survey, which is what if they have to go back and start hiking again, right? What if inflation does start to reaccelerate? I mean, you still have wage inflation of 4 to 5%. That isn't typically consistent with 2 percent of core inflation. And so in the event that they had to re start reaccelerating and hiking cuts again, that's not an expectation. That would be a negative. That would obviously be negative for the markets and for equity valuations. And then the second piece is the real one that I worry about a lot, which is, you know, we are doubling our Treasury supply in 2024. And if you get some sloppy auctions, that could put a lot of pressure on markets as well. Could the markets, the equity markets, already kind of know that, that this is actually what, what's playing out? Or is that what traders yes. are hoping for, that growth and inflation aren't necessarily uh, correlated or, or, or related? Or, or, that, or that we could have growth uh, without necessarily having uh, hyperinflation? Yes, I think that is what you're seeing, right? I mean, well, you, if you just go back, right, we, we had a very tough— um, the market has been running six to eight months, as it always does, ahead of sort of the fundamentals. And I think what the market is telling you is, 
you are going to probably have slightly heightened inflation. You may not get back to the 2 percent. But there are trends, like, you know, the generative AI trend. It's so powerful. If you think about the productivity gains that that is going to create over the entire economy, not just the, the benefits that we're going to have in tech, but the benefits we're going to have across the entire economy, that's huge productivity gains. And that's very supportive of markets and valuations. I was meeting with an insurance company yesterday. They have 400 different use cases for AI and how that's going to improve their business, improve their productivity, improve their risk selection. That's a really powerful trend, and I think that's what you're seeing in the markets.